Warning, the opinions expressed in the following program are that of the host and or guest. They do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Complex Networks, Yahoo Sports, its affiliates, or any employee thereof. This show may contain adult humor and profanity and may not be suitable for general audiences. Now that we got all that corporate bullshit out the way, let's start the show. It looks like Cousins and Thielen are getting into it. Let's head down to our sideline camera and snoop on a private conversation between teammates. They spent too much money on it. Bitch, are you blind? Oh my God, Netflix stock is gonna go through the roof, through the roof when they see how many people watch that bird box shit. Sometimes things look decent, but then you realize you overpaid for it. Like we did with you, and you cost four times what bird box cost. What's that? Feeling chilly, feeling chilly. Yeah, I'll tell you one thing, I bet I'd have a shot with Sandy Bullock if she had to keep that blindfold on. Ha <laughs> you like that? Yeah, but you'd have to be blindfolded too. Whatever, man. You know, I guarantee you, I can complete at least 70% of my passes with this thing on. What do you think they were afraid of looking at? They never really said what it was. To me, it looked like wind. But they didn't tell us what was the entity. I think it's pretty obvious they were seeing the devil. <laughs> no way, bro. They were just showing the paradise that is the afterlife. That makes no sense. Why are they sad then? Because even though the future is bright, the life that they know is never gonna be the same again and it's over, kinda like us on our season. Except our future isn't that bright. With you around. Huh? Phelan is chillin'. Phelan, chillin'. Well, the Vikings got some much bigger problems than whatever the hell Sandra Bullock was paddling away from blindfolded on a river. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to 2019 and welcome to Mostly Football. Alongside the Super Bowl champ, Martellus Bennett, who's got a new art book out, and funny man James Davis, who's got a new comedy spe essential special coming out. I'm Ben Lyons. I have nothing to promote and no names to drop. What? until later in the show. All right, we've got a lot to discuss today, <laughs> but before we dive in, looking ahead to Wild Card Weekend, is there a team that can make a run and win it all? Marty, you still high on the Chargers? This is your squad still? Yeah, I still, I'm still very high on the Chargers. I still like their defense. I like, I think they're the most complete team, and I've, I've watched them play plenty of games, and if the offense, Melvin Gordon's coming back, Hunter Henry's about to make a, so he got fresh legs, literally fresh legs, you know what I'm saying? So I think that's a new dynamic that they add that you haven't seen, so how are they going to use him, get him involved? I, play, I see that they will probably bring him in a game on a pitch count, mostly on like third down and get some balls and things like that, but I still like the Chargers, but I'm also, you know, the Bears, um, yeah, so, bear down. So you got the Bears, so the defense of the Bears and playing, they got, like they this weekend, they play the Eagles at home, so that's a big advantage for them. But also, I always, always have a special place for the Patriots because they only have to win two games, right? That bye week is very special. So you get the week off, you get to watch other motherfuckers, Brews, you get your, everyone gets healthy. Gronk is going to be a little bit healthier. The way they used him toward the later this season was preparing him for the playoffs. Like they didn't try to get him involved too much, catching the balls and things like that. So I think they will, he's going to have like a big run these last three games. Like Gronk needs to be Gronk for three games, and I think he will be able to do that. So you can never count the Patriots out. All right, so Marty named like half the NFL. <laughs> like, yeah. about the Chargers. Uh, James, give me a Super Bowl prediction that has nothing to do with the game of football. Uh, black people are only going to watch half of the halftime show. Uh, just the Travis Scott portion. That's yeah. my prediction. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't uh, know what the money line in Vegas is for that, but it's probably pretty, pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I, I know for a fact you, a lot of people are going to tune out. Do you think, do you think they will talk him out of doing it? Travis Scott? Yeah. I know Jay-Z and everybody's reaching out to him. You know, Travis Scott has the kind of tattoos on his head and face that make me think that he doesn't listen to outside opinions. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like if he wants to do the Super Bowl, he's going to do the Super Bowl. Yeah. Big yeah. show today, a Super Bowl show. We got Amanda Seals, she's stopping by, and Marty's not the only great tight end in the house. Mercedes Lewis, he's going to be here. Also on tap, drama in Pittsburgh. Should the Steelers actually trade Antonio Brown? And speaking of trades, how much should the Niners give up for OBJ? Plus, we go one on one with the Rams, Akib Talib. Try talking one on one. Just keep it fun. You know, I, I, that's what I say. Don't get personal, because then guys want to get personal with you, and then when they see you outside of football, they might fuck you up. Talk football, keep it fun. You ain't built like that, don't act like you built like that. To that now, you're not built like you're that. Not, not built like that. Do you know what that means? <laughs> if you're not built like that, don't act like you act like you built like that. That means if you ain't about that life, don't act like you about that life. 
I'm definitely not about the same life you are, Martellus. I'll tell you that much. We are not about the same life. Um, but we're about the same things here on Mostly Football as when we started the season off and we talked about the Steelers' dysfunction. Everything was about Le'Veon Bell in week one, and now here we are with Antonio Brown, who was supposedly pissed off and threw a ball at Big Ben, and then A.B. was ruled inactive, reportedly for disciplinary reasons. His agent called Saturday saying he'd play. Coach Tomlin was like, nah, we're good. It's too late for that. Then Brown just walked out at halftime. So... You know, this guy's tweeting about being in command of his attitude and then for some reason started following the 49ers on Twitter. What's going on with A.B., Marty, and what's going on with the Steelers? you think he plays there next year? No, he does not play there next year. And I was interested. I was always interested once I saw how much success Juju was having, right? Like, Le'Veon is in a different position, like, you know, the things that he's doing. But Antonio Brown has been the focus of that offense. And production-wise, Juju was more productive. Of course, Antonio had the – had more um, touchdowns or whatever. But, like, when it came to, like, getting targets, Juju may have a game where he's getting 14 targets and A.B. was only getting six. That's new territory for him. And when you, the, you know, you want to get the ball, you want to make plays, and he loves being in the spotlight. That's why he makes plays, and that's why he plays the way that he does. So I knew that Ego was going to play at coming part – coming to play at some part of the season with the success that Juju was having, having to share that field and feeling like that, hey – Maybe I'm not as important to the team as I once was. And then Juju gets MVP of the team. So it's just kind of like everyone kind of gets pushed off. What happens in the NFL, and I tell motherfuckers this all the time, and this is why I tell motherfuckers when I tell them this all the time. At one point, <laughs> every player is the lion, right? And what happens? And the other player is the gazelle. Every day the gazelle wakes up, it has to run because it knows the lion is going to chase him. And for a long period of time, Antonio Brown was the lion chasing the gazelle. But now he's the gazelle, and Juju Schuster is the lion. So he, some people don't like to be the gazelle. They don't like to feel like someone's gaining on them to catch up with them, because once you get caught by a lion, what's happened? Arr! But aren't, can't there be, like, lots of lions in the jungle? Hell no! Nah. Why when, not? Because there's only one king of the jungle. They don't be like, the kings of the jungle? I don't know. There was just one jungle's Mufasa. a big place. Scar had jungle's to kill... a big place, But man. Scar had to kill his brother to become king. You, you can't just drop Lion King for, like, animal facts. Why not? <laughs> we can't be talking, like, National Geographic, but you're like, but in Lion King. Okay, there's one king in every tribe of lions, a herd of lions, right? There's not multiple kings in herds, so you can have as many. Each team is its own herd, so each team has its own king, right? But there's not multiple kings on there. You can have a king lion that's on defense. That's like Scar. All right, so did Antonio Brown <laughs> turn into a gazelle? Or did, He's the, a gazelle or now. did the lion just nah. quit on the jungle? He's the gazelle now. The gazelle. He's but the he's gazelle. the gazelle who's quitting. He's like, I qu he's the gazelle who quit the jungle. Because he doesn't like his well, the, position. The gazelle who, the gazelle who quit. This isn't Madagascar now. Yeah. We're talking <laughs> <Lion King. laughs> no, At least the Steelers <laughs> have some stability in their jungle with their head coach. Um, however, for around the NFL, it was Black Monday this week as six coaches were fired for the season. Eight head coaches have gotten the ax. And the 2019 season kicks off the Jets, Dolphins, Cardinals, Broncos, Bengals, Bucks, Packers, and Browns will all have a new head coach. Marty, you always say players win games, not coaches. But which one of these vacancies do you think is the best opportunity for a coach to step in? It's always interesting when you look at the coaches because personality of city comes in play. So, like, the personality of the coach, you have to fit. Like, no one, not anyone can just go to Detroit and coach. You know what I'm saying? Green Bay has a certain personality. So like, Nobody can go to Detroit and coach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, you're absolutely right about but, that. But, like, you have to fit that the vibe of the city and the uh, vibe of that team. You know what I'm saying? So, there's, like, a standard of the culture that you have there that the right coach has to come in and class. You know, a place like Miami, anybody could go down there because it's just one of those places, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's just like everyone's welcome. It's like, who knows what the team's supposed to be like, you know? But, like, a lot of these places, they have these cultures built in. They have a certain way, a certain style. They want to have the team. So when you start come changing those things, the people who are fans, the ticket holders, they start to get a, oh, oh things are different. It's changing. Is it going to be good? So which one? So which all these cities that, that, are, that I mentioned, you know, from, from Phoenix, obviously, out in Arizona, out in Cleveland and New York, what's the spot? Well, if I... I'm a coach. I'm looking for tax purposes to make sure I get all my money. You know what I'm saying? So that's one thing that comes into play. Um, but at the same time, I think if you look at the Cardinals, I don't think is a good place right now. They got a lot they need to do down there. And then I will say out of those, I think the, the Browns are a good spot right now, mainly because they have a lot of young talent. 
right? But I think they have the coach they need. Why not? Why would you get rid of the coach that won seven games for you that's there and right they're now? They're coming off like a you know one of the best seasons in franchise history in recent. Yeah, years. so why it's a why great move? wave to ride and just kind of take it to the next level? How about you, James? You looking at all the cities? Which one jumps out at you? Um, <clears throat> is New York on there? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I I feel like I'm torn. But it's the Jets, not the Giants. That's I know. Two different New York. I know. I know. But I still feel like. <laughs> The fan base, like you, you turn the Jets around, you know that the Jets fan base is starving. Like I know Jets fans, they're sad. They, they, Adam, they, yeah, Adam, yeah. yeah. They, well, they, but here's the thing about this though. In New York, they have what the I call the one third rule. Like people don't really give a shit about the football, really, because one third of people like football, one third of people just go, and one mm-hmm. third of people just don't give a fuck because there's so many other things to do in New York. So it's like the one third rule. So it's like football fans in New York is like it kind of feels like it's scattered a little. Yeah, bit. but James is right though. If the Jets get popping and Sam Darnold gets it going, you're the head coach there. Then I think two thirds of the city. I, I like Sam Darnold. I think yeah. they have a good. I think they have a lot of key pieces in place that you could build around with the Jets. So it is a good place. It's a good market. But every coach not built for the New York market either. Nah, that New sure. York market is totally different. As a player, you get you get highlighted a lot more. Your failures are projected on page six and shit. So, I mean, that's a tough place. So you got to have the right personality in that, in that place as well. Well, speaking of New York market, five of the eight coaches who were fired were black. The Steelers, Mike Tomlin, and the Chargers, Anthony Lynn, are now the only two African-American head coaches in the NFL, a league that is 70% black. Marty, how legit is the Rooney rule, which is supposed to help minority candidates get coaching jobs? I mean, you think the you look at the Rooney rule and the way that a lot of teams go about it, they'll just try to interview like a DB coach in-house so they could go get the, the guy they want. Like they did it with Gruden. Like when they hired Gruden, it's like, oh, they didn't. Like it's crazy when you got to tell somebody you need to interview somebody black before you can hire someone white. You know what I'm saying? So like the fact that you got to pull put a rule in place shows you that there is an issue with the hiring process when it comes to it. So... Um, it's well, clearly the rule's not effective right now because it's, like, the percentages don't add up. I mean, to have two head coaches in the league that are black in a league that's seventy percent black. But, but think about really that. You sense. got you got to do the real math. How many black owners are there in the NFL? Yeah. All right, and then how many black GMs are there? Right. So the people who are doing the hiring process, they don't look like us. So therefore, you know, when they go into that thing, they want to hire someone like them. And coordinator positions as well, too. Like, I'm thinking of, like, guys like Sean McVay and Kyle Shannon. Like, these younger coordinators, I don't see – I don't know too many, like, all-star black coordinators. So. I mean, yeah, there's not a whole – there's no, yeah. they don't have a lot of them. You know, like, um, do, do Staley got – I like Mike Groh, but do Staley was up for the job in Eagles and Mike Groh got it. And then it just, it just varies. Like, it's like – they look at the position coaches, and I've played on teams where they hire black coaches because a lot of times the white coaches have a hard time communicating with the black players. You know what I'm saying? So they have a lot of black coaches in place to be the one to do the talking. The middleman, like, the, tra- the yeah, translator. Yeah, so he's like, okay, you can go talk to Martellus about this. I'm like, the black whisperer. Why don't you come talk? Yeah, the black whisperer. That's a good point for it. Yeah. So they hire black whisperers all the time. Mm, well, teams don't hire black head coaches, but they do overpay for shitty quarterbacks. If you look at the quarterbacks this year that were the highest paid, the six highest paid quarterbacks, Aaron Rodgers, Matt Ryan, Jimmy Garoppolo, Kirk Cousins, Matt Stafford, Derek Carr. They have the same seat I do for the playoffs. You're going to be watching at home. Marty, what does it say about the state of the league where these quarterbacks were all getting big checks are not going to be playing football in January? I mean, I think some of those quarterbacks are actually good. I mean, Matt Stafford could literally make every single throw that you could possibly want. But I still truly believe deep in my heart, deep, deep down in this, my heart's a lot bigger than the Grinches, that – Quarterback is the only position you could be mediocre at and get paid $100 million. Kirk Cousins wasn't even mediocre, and especially in big games. So when you see, like, I don't know, you're a Raiders guy, and you see Derek Carr on that list coming off a a huge contract and a a terrible season. It's it's the culture. I think it still has to go back to, like, the owners, the GMs, and who they believe in, who are their favorites, who they put their, their trust in, who has an overall privilege within the whole system of a football team because yeah some of those guys are struggling i'm a big Derek carr fan po- i mean not this season per se but <laughs> i have rooted hard for Derek, and i like Derek. but then it's like there's the raiders let go of so many other talented players that they just felt were not as important or as a priority and i think it's just a mental thing of who the owners feel their money should go to, and I and it's just like a systematic thing within the NFL. But then they hired to go get Nathan Peterman, 
who Muhammad Sanu is probably a better quarterback than. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, one side note, Nick Foles was contracted to make an additional $1 million in a bonus if he played 33% of the Eagles' plays Sunday. Uh, Foles suffered a rib injury and played in 32%. Mm. He missed the mill by four plays. Um, should they pay him still? Does this happen sometimes when guys fall just short of bonuses? Yeah, well, some teams, if you – you like, it depends on the integrity of the team, too. Like, if they – like, a guy like that get – first of all, if I know that, I'm not coming off the field, right? Fuck my right. rib. I'm going to hand that bitch off for four more plays and then come out. Like, I'm going to get – like, you know, on any given Sunday, did, did I get my bonus? Yeah, hell yeah, you got your bonus, man. i tell you this. When I was playing with the, the New York Giants um, – I needed, a, I needed a catch, right, to get a bonus. It was like 75 grand. You know, I'm like, fuck, I need that money. But the season kept going. I was like, they don't use me in the red zone as much. So I told Eli, like, in the middle of the game, I was like, man, I need one more catch to get a bonus. Right? He's like, why didn't you tell me that? So this play came up, and he switched my spot with um, with um, Victor Cruz, and I caught a touchdown against the Saints. And I got my bonus. He's like, yeah, now we could go spend money together. It was like, it was like I will always have a, a love for Eli for that moment. <laughs> like I didn't like I needed that bonus. There was no way like I couldn't go tell the coaches like, hey, throw me the ball. Like you know, what I'm saying maybe that's why he's so shitty now. He's not really trying to win the game. He's just, he's trying, just trying to get to... everybody paid in bonuses. I, I want to give him my Marty Award. That's some, <laughs> that's some real shit, Eli. He helped you secure the bag. He did. I like my white friends to help me secure the bag. <laughs> <laughs> well, plenty of the Cowboys played their fair share on Sunday, but. Why? They weren't all playing for bonuses. The Cowboys had the fourth spot in the playoffs guaranteed, so Sunday's game against the Giants had real no, no real impact on their playoff standing. Dak Prescott played the entire game. So did most of the defensive starters. Dallas did, however, rest Zeke Elliott. However, Marty, how smart was it to risk injury when they had nothing really to gain from this? Well, I, you got to think about it. I think they had a lot to gain. It's about being momentum, being sharp. And if you feel like your team is young, they can't really afford to take that game off and then know what it's like to prepare the next week. So strategically, you got to go about it. You took the player out that matters the most out of the game, you know, the guy that gets 80% of your offense going, let him rest up because he's just, you know, he's doing his thing. But you want your team to stay sharp and stay focused and know that, like, we don't have a buy. Like, we don't get a buy. We got to play for everything we have. So I thought it was smart by Jason Gary to put his guys out there. I mean, anytime you step out on the field, anytime you practice, even if they're practicing, players could get hurt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, and Dak Prescott gets laid out in the third quarter and breaks his leg. That's going to be the lead of our show this week. I mean, that can happen on any play in football, I guess. I mean, but why even put the dudes but they out don't, there? But they don't have this track record of going into the postseason and killing it, you know? So it's not like they could be like, hey, you know what? You guys take off this week because we know what to do. In the postseason, we've proven to ourselves yeah. year after year that in the postseason, we turn it on. They don't even know what turning it on in the postseason is. So I agree with Marty. They need all the momentum, all the repetitions, because if they're not at their best, even if they are at their best, they still might lose because they're the Cowboys. I think what people get confused that you're used to seeing these teams that at this moment and this time that has that game to secure, they have a lot more veterans. Right, this team is not full of like veterans who've been to the playoffs. They know how to keep their body ready to go play in the playoff game. They know how to mentally prepare without having to play in a game. That's something that you learn over time, being playing and playing in those big stages and things like that. I don't think they feel like their team was there mature and uh, maturity wise, you know. So I think it was smart. I hope they get waxed this weekend. I fucking hate the Cowboys. Who they play? Seattle. Well, yeah, Seattle. I mean, you know, Sierra's gonna be there. Either way, my turn. <laughs> Let's switch it up. Chris Brown faces two misdemeanors for having an exotic monkey without a permit. Did anyone ever tell Chris Brown that pet monkeys shit all over the place? Brown voluntarily gave up the monkey, named Fiji, by the way. He's got a court date next month, Chris Brown, not the monkey, and he could face up to six months. Know your pet laws, people. They're out there. Your well, monkey ain't safe. Well. What? This is just. This Make is, it deep. This is, this is interesting. <laughs> Well, it, it can be deep, but I don't want to go there right now this early in the show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to give production a little bit of time to get ready to cut shit. You know, give them more film before they have to start beeping shit out. You know, what the fuck he talking about today? I mean, like, the like, okay, if you give, he gave the monkey up, so it's like surrendering yourself to the law. You know what I'm saying? If you're going to get fined or get a whatever, you might as well keep the monkey, I feel like. If I'm paying the fines, like, now let me go through the proper paperwork to make sure I can keep my monkey Fiji. But the interesting thing is, like, why the fuck you got a monkey? Because it's like kind of like what you do when you're a pop star of a certain level. You start buying yeah. weird animals. I'm just disappointed with his choice of animal because like, right. we've seen that. We've seen the pop star buy the monkey. We've seen the pop star buy the llama. Like, I want to see the. Who bought a llama? 
Michael Jackson had llamas. He had a monkey. Oh, he has all kinds of shit, though. Yeah, so I'm saying, so if you're going to have pop star animal money, like, go buy some wild shit. Oh, yeah, a I think, like, like, orangutan. Or a, a fucking kangaroo. Like, how many fuckers could say, like, yeah, come to the house, kangaroo. I'm having a barbecue, I got my kangaroo here. And my wombat and my koala. Like, We're going to have a, a whole, cool. like, Australian yeah. farm oh, at my crib. Or a fucking panda, because you know why pandas are awesome? Let me just drop you some animal facts here, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> kung fu? Yeah, pandas do do kung fu. That was an excellent movie. I really, really like that one, DreamWorks. But um, the idea, the panda. So, you know, so the, pay, the panda mate in ritual. What happens is the female panda climbs to the top of the tree, right? She climbs to the top of the tree. Then all the male pandas okay. come around and they dance. And she picks the best dancers to mate with. So it's kind of like going to the club and getting some thoughts in the panda world. But what happens sometimes, there's this douchebag panda who comes and just beats up the better dancing panda and takes the girl. I hate that. Uh, <laughs> from pandas to goats. Wine toting LeBron, by the way, showing up to a game swirling a Cabernet, that's baller, said he felt he was the greatest of all time when he led the Cavs to a title in 2016. Wonder how he felt after losing the Series 4-1 the next year or getting swept last year. You know what? Uh, I don't know. Cause yeah, you the greatest, but not the past two seasons. I don't know, man. I'm a king, I, I like LeBron. That's, that's ballsy. That's bold. I, I mean, walking into the stadium, drinking wine, I think that's just a bad image as far as for kids who, because they don't really understand, like, if you're not playing, like, they think of it like, oh, I could drink wine before I play. So you got to think about that, that's the kids true. that's watching you to play. Like, I'm not disappointed in him drinking the wine. I'm disappointed in other NBA players now not using this as an opportunity to show up drinking whatever they want. I think he should like, drink the wine. Jose Calderon coming through some sangria, I think it would be a really <laughs> strong look. Like, well, I, I want to see these guys I, dig deep. I'm fine them. when he's drinking the wine. It's just like, like walking, like it just uh, like I mean, did he have a wine glass too? Yeah, yeah not yeah. it was like um, it wasn't like on a that's stem. His thing. It was like kind of a that's wine is his yeah. thing. Like he's like not Tom a big. I like wine. Guy. I don't go. I mean, I like weed. You know what I'm saying? He should, if he really want to be a fucking baller, and LeBron, you dropping your nuts right now, doing all this shit that you want to do. If you really want to say something to the world, I challenge you. This is like the Mamba challenge, but the Marty challenge. I challenge you to walk into Lakers uh, Stadium with the, the Staples Center smoking a blunt. Do that. Then, damn, that's my nigga. Then you'll be the greatest of all time. Until then, you good. But she went great. Nah, he really, <laughs> but I just don't feel like you could call your, like, time is, time is still in motion. But, but wait, now, I think this gets taken out of context. In that moment, he felt like the greatest of all time. I understand. I'll, I'll, I'll accept I can, that. I can feel like you know that. But it does like sound like when he said it that he was saying, like, now that I've done this, I'm, I'm right. the greatest of all yes. time. Yes. Like, you know, it was also kind of killer. It was when Kyrie Irving hit that three. Like, it was, yeah. you know, Kyrie went for 40. No, like, Kyrie, Kyrie was like, yes. Kyrie mind. was also the greatest of all time that series. If Kyrie was not there, do they win? Of course not. So, agree to, I don't know. I don't know. Agree that LeBron. I think LeBron. LeBron's, at LeBron's one of my favorite players. I love to watch the motherfucker play. He's just good. He could do everything. His basketball IQ is high. Like he's just an intelligent basketball player, and he's just really fucking good. He, he's his jump shot is getting better. He's just he, he's one of the few players that as they get older, they get better. Speaking of players who get older and get better, <laughs> Floyd Mayweather's killing it in the money for effort spent category. He knocked out a Japanese kickboxer in the first round of an exhibition match, earning $9 million in two minutes. Bigger question, how long will Money Mayweather take to spend it all? I, I, I feel like he's actually better with his money than a lot of people give him credit for. I agree. Yeah. I agree. That, that question was misleading. I think he saves a lot of his money. He spends a, he spends a lot as well, but like he, he does silly shit like this to make more money. I guess I, I don't see him going broke because he like he looks like one of those people that loves being rich. Oh no, he yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's, <laughs> like that's dude, his ask Adam, identity. that dude loves to gamble, man. So you can make a lot of money, but when you're putting half a million dollars on a Phoenix Suns game on a Tuesday night, that money's gonna run out at some point. Yeah, yeah I mean that's, that's here, true. you can't take Message. it with you. You can't take it with you anyway. That's money just makes you more of what you already are. If you do drugs, you're gonna buy better drugs. You like women, you're gonna pay for better women. You like cars, you're gonna get that's one thing I learned about money through the years of becoming wealthy. When you were getting your Bentleys? Yeah, but I sold it. Right. Uh, segways <laughs> on this show are killing. All right. <laughs> Celebrities pay publicists to do damage control. If you're Cardi B's publicist, you're not afraid to do the damage yourself and throw down for your client as you enjoy this video. Keep in mind, Cardi B's publicist is ironically named Patience Foster. No wonder your husband. Bitch, I'll smack the shit out. You don't ever come out your mouth about her motherfucking husband. I 
That's so weird, like Robert Downey Jr.'s publicist acts the same way on the red carpet. Really? Yeah. Stop I like it. how she said, I'll smack the shit out of you, and then said, watch your mouth. It's like, <laughs> when you say, watch your mouth, and if you don't, then I'll, and he's like, I'm gonna smack the shit out of you, no matter what, so you should watch your mouth. I like her. Is I she like, for hire? I mean, I don't know. My publicist, you, I, like, I work with Sunshine Sex, and they don't even have a website. You don't even know who the fuck they are. They're like the, the wizard, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like... The publisher's job is to promote the person to be famous and for not them to be famous. So the publisher just became famous. I love that Sean Sachs' day involves handling Leonardo DiCaprio's business, Ben Affleck's business, and dealing with Marty Rex. I know. I, I think I, that's great to be I, on the call sheet. Well, <laughs> I know, right? I like that. Sean that's Sachs is getting way too much Sunshine Sachs. right now. Sunshine <laughs> Sachs. Shout out to Sunshine Sachs for getting me where I am today by promoting me in a proper way. Well, Cardi defended her publicist, not named Saxophone, saying, quote, <laughs> that's my bitch. So they're, they're very tight. They're, they're very tight. Yeah. Now, Bird Box, the movie where Sandra Bullock is blindfolded in a rowboat with two kids scared shitless, birds chirping like motherfuckers, people randomly killing themselves because, hell, who knows? You never see the damn monster. Netflix says the thriller was streamed a record 45 million times in its first seven days. And I am one of those seven million. I watched it. I watched it twice. Am I, one of the, am I the only person that think that movie wasn't that good? I feel like I'm the only person who hasn't seen that fucking movie. I got well, on vacation. I'm not yeah, trying to watch it. Let me tell you what wow. it is. That, well, that's weird. Have you, have you seen The Happening? Yeah. You've seen that movie. You've seen Bird Box, Dan. It's the same movie. But I like scary movies that take place during the day, because so many scary movies are at night, and it's yeah. easy to make, make things go jump in the night. So it's daytime, and you're freaked out. Like That's kind of killer, too. I didn't find the movie scary, though. I think it's more of a suspenseful film. It was suspenseful, but I mean, it just had a lot of like memeable moments that have it yeah. super popping. Like, that's the best now. The memes were like, the uh, guy's holding the lady's eyes open, and it's like uh, a girl trying to make her dude see that he was wrong. And it's, you know, you gotta. <laughs> but like, who, if Netflix said 150 million people watch it, like, who's throwing a challenge flag? Like, well, so. Can't they come out and just say whatever number they want? Well, so they That's had to true. prove, they had to prove. So, how do Netflix count their 70, friends? If you've watched 70%. 70 of it. So, if you watch 70% of it, it counts as a, a view, right? But then I actually think the number is actually lower. Because a Netflix account, I may be in a room watching it with five people, you know what I'm saying, or six people. Then that's yeah, six that's, movie tickets. That's you know, don't count all six ratings, people. That's regular TV ratings as well, right? So the but the idea of what organization is is monitoring Netflix? Yeah, but move, but TV, they're not doing. I like though. you know what I'm saying, like I original. Like, I film. like woke Ben. Ben's huh? asking all the conspiracy questions. I like. No, it. I, mean, I just have a movie I used on Netflix, and I want to know what the numbers are. <laughs> no one will tell me shit. So yeah. That's like title. Title don't release their streaming numbers. Well. Guys, there's a lot of questions, but let's get some answers. To better understand the bird box phenomenon, we sent Marty's best friend, Desi, out onto the river. Desi, don't take your blindfold off. What's up, MFers? This is best friend Desi coming to you live from the middle of the river somewhere. And I know it's a new year, but I still gotta hit you with that exclusive exclusive. And today, I got none other than one of them wind monsters from Bird Box, and I think they're coming over right now. Shh. Hey, hey, yo, monster, monster! Take the blindfold off. It's beautiful. I know I ain't supposed to take this blindfold off, but my eyes itch. Hey, what you mean beautiful? Over there, looking like a giant fart. Wait. Where you going? I thought we was doing this interview. Monster, monster. Man, the bird box monster all up in his feelings. Said they ain't trying to do no interview right now. But this is Desi Brown for Mostly Football. Back to you in the studio. I'm getting up out of here. I was, I was wondering if he was gonna be affected, but he killed himself at the end, or did he just- Well, jump? the whole thing with this is that he's black, <laughs> right? So we know he's not gonna survive in a scary movie. So I'm not going to see this shit. I don't believe it. It didn't happen. He wasn't really there because all the black people in the movie died, even the ones that matter. So black people always die in a scary movie. There's a rule to being black in a scary movie. You know what the number one rule is? Recruit other blacks so that maybe you can live a little bit longer. <laughs> well, speaking of death, <laughs> a French woman died, whose name I can't pronounce, in 1997, <laughs> and she was 122 years old, making her the Dang. oldest living person ever. 
Except now, a Russian mathematician is convinced the woman actually died in 1934 and her daughter assumed her identity, which means the woman who died in 97 was actually just 99, just 99 years old. I don't know if anyone gives a fuck what? about that, so it's time now for how many fucks. Our guest today is a multi-hyphenated talent. She's a comedian, an actress. She can be seen on HBO's Insecure, and she's probably best known to audiences for appearing on episode 13 of the Lion's Den podcast. <laughs> you can download now on iTunes and Podcast One. Amanda Seals, it's great Hi. to see you. I, I love saying multi-hyphenated talent because you've gotten to do so many cool things over the years, and you're like constantly reinventing yourself. You remind me of this dude, always creating, always taking on new stuff. So what's the vibe for 2019? What are you into right now? And, and what is it like to always kind of have your hand so many different things. The vibe. The vibe of 2019. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm already laughing. <laughs> Jace knows me. So. I know. <laughs> I can't curse, right? <laughs> the segment's called How Wait, Fox, Jace, are you so. crushing right now? <laughs> Crushing? No. Oh, no. Oh, no. I like so like, oh, You know, oh, my gosh, I just know her so well. Man, that's what it's it is. <laughs> I just like, there's, there's so many ways Amanda can go from just that. I'm just like, man. You know what it is? It's like when you're riding the roller coaster and you're on their way up. It's like, this is gonna That's be the bad. worst part. No, I mean, the vibe. <laughs> 2019, I mean, I'm really just trying to pull like my proverbial dick out. Like that's what, that's what 2019 is. Just like, ah, balls on the table. Like you always knew that it was there and now it's just like, it's time to show in a, in a greater way the actualizing of all these like multi-hyphenated elements, right? I want to say this to you. I did that exact thing in 2018, and it was great. Yeah. It was the greatest thing. So enjoy 2019, because if you do that, you take it out and lay your balls on the table. That's, it's just, yeah. it's so freeing. It's freeing. For, for, for everybody at home, this is a, this is a crazy metaphor. <laughs> crazy metaphor. Please don't go into your boss's office like, I believe in myself. I'll put my metaphor. balls out right now. Yeah. No. Well, you're the perfect person then to have here for how many fucks. So we're going to go through a few things and just put the Balls on the table, let's yes, do it, right? Yes. So first up, a police department in New Orleans suburb posted a message to Facebook urging anyone who may have purchased meth in the state to bring it in immediately because that meth might be contaminated with some Zika. That's right, the Zika virus reportedly <laughs> uh, popping up in meth in Louisiana and no Walter White wannabe showed up returning their meth. So Marty, how many fucks about the meth in Louisiana? I give one Steven Seagal worth of fucks, and that's just because I didn't know what the, how many fucks to give about this at all. But, like, <laughs> what? what criminals are following? How many criminals are actually following the police department on Facebook? It sounds like the thing you should be able to do, like, oh, we're here today. Like, I mean, I just don't see. I watched enough First 48 to know not to tell on myself, and it just sounds crazy to bring <laughs> meth into the police department. Like, hey, I got this meth, and can you check it for me? I'm a graduate of First 48 University. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how, many, how many fucks, Amanda? Uh, I give a cash money taking over for the nine nines and the two thousands, but because I always thought heroin was the real issue <laughs> in Louisiana. Like I know when I, I know when I was uh, writing for like Double XL and the Source, and I was interviewing Cash Money when they were like really popping. Like that was what they were always talking about. So I'm just like, oh damn, like meth found its way into Louisiana as well. And also like know your audience, police department. Like the meth addicts are not the ones who are like. The most compliant, I would say, of the drug addicts. Uh, I would agree. And they're most likely to be on Twitter, not Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I Fair, enough. Enough. Fair enough. Louisiana, it seems like an Arizona or New Mexico story. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, how many fucks, James? I have one on the right track fuck. Because you know what? <laughs> hey, they had to make a decision, <laughs> these meth heads, and they made the right one. So they, can, they still have some ability to think and make a right decision. Now the next right decision is to, I don't know, stop doing meth. Right, right, But right, there's, right. there's still hope there in those meth brains. Did anybody bring anything back? Nobody. Nobody, nobody brought up. the meth nobody. back. Nobody. I'm terrified for this. I give a terrified fuck because we're not even talking about the Zika of it all. So just like, <laughs> hey, you meth heads, <laughs> who might be having children, 
we want you guys to oh, be like, just be aware that there's Zika in the meth. So that is, is has that me terrified. Double win. Yeah, it's a double. Most win. meth heads are probably like, there's Zika in this right. shit now. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> extra <laughs> season. <laughs> extra season. <laughs> I'm about to get fucked up. <laughs> Next up, MTV is rebooting its docu series. Shout out to Amanda Diva. Uh, True Life, the <laughs> debut episode, features people whose life obsession is to look and act like a Kardashian. Hashtag life goals, right? My question: Does anyone just want to be like Ye or be like themselves? Marty, how many fucks are living life like a Kardashian? I give a Dr. Frankenstein worth the fucks because <laughs> most of the women come out looking like the monster. The ass all heavy. It's just like it, if your ass don't match your hamstrings, that's just awkward. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it's like <laughs> the booty meat to thigh meat needs to be the proportionate. The, the ratio. Ratio's, ratio. The ratio's totally off. And then like, <laughs> like it's just totally weird to, I just don't get it. Like I know that the Kardashians have become the standard of what beauty is no. to most of society. No. To a lot of people, to a lot <laughs> of young arthropods. kids. They're what? They're arthropods. They look like oh. ants. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. They do have a little. Hey, sh hey, I like how you tried to just be like, yeah, oh, arthropods. <laughs> no, I didn't. Well, first of all, I didn't know what it was. Well, I went to take I, was like, well, I went to I went to agriculture school, so we learned about that. You mm -hmm. probably think an insect and a bug is the same thing, but it's not. <laughs> how many fucks? <laughs> Poultry science too? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I went to Texas A&M. Like those. Go Aggies! Yeah. Oh, are you, you probably Aggie? know. Uh, hey, you, you fucking no, I have. Are you? Listen, yeah. You probably know a couple of my exes. I, I know a lot of people's exes. We will exes. have conversations. It's like all uh, the exes are drawn to me. They try to get relationship advice to not be exes anymore. I went to I went to A and M and per, I performed at A and M so many times in the two year span that I had like a full ass man there. What years? I, we'll discuss. Okay. Um, <laughs> I guess you got to go back to this MTV show that none of us are gonna watch. So yeah. how many fucks on the True Life? I, I want to know more about your exes in Texas. I, yeah, True Life. I'm Amanda, this, and I have a whole ass ex in Texas. I, I oh, there's even funny. How many fucks that. about the Kardashians? I, I give a, uh, show on I give life. a single black female fuck because really. They're not, it's not true life. I'm trying to be like a Kardashian. Your, your true life just trying to look like a black woman because that's what the Kardashians uh, are trying to look like. They're just I totally trying to agree. look like black women. Yeah. And, but not live black lives. But, or not raise their black children as black children. But well, that's how, another show. How do you feel about like when women do appropriate the black culture like that to look and act, but like you said, avoid the actual, they don't understand the black struggle that the women go through and things like that. That's my really, privilege. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, let's that, stop that, was, that was my 2019 let's stop, let's resolution to get as much white privilege as possible and give it to my niggas to use. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right, right when I want to shut you up, you say some cool shit. <laughs> How many fucks, James? I give, what are we talking about? Oh, yeah, MTV True Life. I give one confused fuck because who were the people asking MTV to bring back True Life in the first place? Like, not yeah, where music I videos, know. yo MTV raps, or like some of their better shows. Sucker Free Sundays. Sucker Free Sundays. Or Lyricist Lounge. Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, true life, who really needed that? Besides people in flyover states in the middle of America that me and Amanda are gonna perform at their college. I didn't know, I didn't even yeah. know that MTV was still a thing. Well, I, like, what, I, how do you I, order it? What package is it in? Because I don't have it. I think Spectrum. you don't know about it because they're doing shows like True Life. <laughs> I give a, can we go back to the meth topic, fuck. <laughs> that is far less terrifying than a whole nation of people trying to be Kardashians. Yeah. All right, a customer at McDonald's turned belligerent when he couldn't find a straw. He grabbed the female employee, proceeded to go all Mike Tyson on his ass. No surprise, the video went viral. No surprise either, the guy was supposedly drunk and it all went down, of course, in the great state of Florida. Marty, how many fucks about this beatdown? I don't think that he knew that he was gonna get his ass, he was gonna get a, ass, a side of ass whooping with that fucking fry he had, you know what I'm saying? I give a Ray Kroc worth the fucks, the guy that founded McDonald's and shit. I didn't think that he thought this was, well maybe he did think this is what McDonald's was gonna be like. But at the same time, it's just really fucked up like, well, like that white man can put their hands on a black woman like this and feel like it's okay. And then at the end of the day be like, I just was asking for a straw. What, when did asking become putting your hands on somebody in a story? Just, it just, it just, I don't know. It just don't look me at me just because I'm a white dude. All right, so man, <laughs> how many fucks do you? Do? I don't know. I don't get it. I give a McDowell's fuck because this never would have went down at McDowell's. <laughs> this never would have went down at the Golden Arcs. Uh, you know, this video takes me to, to, to a level of, of anger. Uh, and lividness on so many levels. One, he did that because that's always been the standard. Because there has always been a standard in this nation that says, like, as a white man, I can do me, and the odds are, like, the odds are in my favor that I'm gonna get off. Definitely. Like, not all the time, but most, enough of the yeah. time where it's like, let's give it a shot.
Mm -hmm. Now, the other part of it, though, that incenses me more is that this sister had no help. There is a whole squad of folks in there with her. Brothers, there's the Asian manager. There's a whole, there's a whole Benetton ad of folks in there, and nobody came to her aid. She had to molly wop this motherfucker to end to like for a, like a whole minute long video. That always makes me upset too, because it's like there's so many spaces for someone to step up. There's so many, and no one else in the video was enraged. Nobody Everyone was, was just they like, go ahead. They still carried the transaction. Yeah. But you know what else makes me mad? The people in my comments, the brothers, your people, my people in the comments who are like, well, nah, they shouldn't have helped her because, you know, brothers will get locked up. I'm sorry, did, did we not know that black women are getting locked up at alarming rates in the same way that black women are being killed at alarming rates in the same way? Like, why are we somehow, like, disproportionately not acknowledging well, these things. I won't Sandra tell you. Bland, hello? I want to tell you a story. When I was 15, my brother was 16. I was in the car with my dad, and we were riding, and there was this guy putting his hands on a woman at the gas station, right? I hope y'all pulled over. We did pull over. You know, my dad made us get out and whoop his ass? Good. Then he's like, get back in the car, let's go. Let's go. That's that's honest the truth. But right. I don't that's know how, how I was your raised. conscience. But I don't that's know how, how I was raised. He stayed in the car like, get him, Bennett. Well, he got out the car and just <laughs> get him, Bennett. <laughs> well, my dad was to make us whoop a lot of people's ass. Hustle. Like, I could tell you a lot of stories about my dad making whoop people's ass, but that's a whole nother segment. James, you grew up the same way here in Los Angeles, going to Crossroads where your parents. <laughs> oh, my mom people. would send me out to beat people up all the time. <laughs> uh, how many fucks do you give on this one? Uh, honestly, I give uh, I give a vegan fuck. It's, it all starts with what you're eating. You know, that you eat McDonald's, you get toxins and sickness. It makes you think, it <laughs> makes you just do this. bad stuff. Obviously, I agree with everything <laughs> Amanda says, but I'm the comedy, so. <laughs> I would just like to say that things like this don't happen at Sweet Greens. <laughs> you and I are on the same wave because I give one paper <laughs> straw farm, fuck, right? Mendocino no Farms. I give one paper straw fuck because places that serve paper straws instead of plastic straws, this shit doesn't go down. So I'm with you on that one. All right. Finally, residents of Chandler, Arizona are attacking driverless cars. Folks are upset about the safety of the cars and possible job loss. Waymos, the driverless car company app or whatever that spun out of Google, has been testing van in Chandler, some driverless cars have been pelted with rocks. Others have been driven off the road. One woman was yelling at the driverless car, not realizing it's a driverless car. Uh, Marty, how many fucks do you give about the AI outrage? I give one Lightning McQueen worth of fucks because this goes into the Pixar theory. In the Pixar theory, all human beings die, right? And then machine takes over the world. And then what happens, they sit the motherfuckers to the earth, I mean, out of space in Wally. So it's a follow up to the apocalypse that's happened. That's when monsters, and then there's the planes, and then there's, there's no people in there. So mm -hmm. this is close to being making a Pixar theory come true in real life. But fuck, why the fuck are you throwing rocks at a fucking empty car and running empty cars off the road? Like, go I mean, about your I business. Mean, why aren't you at work? Why do you have time to throw rocks at cars? I give a we are not the same fuck because I look at people like this and I'm like, are we both humans? <laughs> I don't understand. With the, the brand of the car is Waymo. I have way more sense <laughs> than these people. I don't under, like, I literally can't I was gonna make a Waymo joke. <laughs> Dang it. The comedy. The comedy. How many fucks, James? Now you gotta go serious. Cars. You brought the comedy. Yeah, now, yeah, now you gotta be you serious. Get okay. You know what? Break down I give, what's I give, going on. I give one Amish fuck because I feel like <laughs> it must be only Amish people who are this angry at technology. <laughs> right. Are they burning their iPads? Are they just not using lights and they're just using candles? Like, who's. Don't throw rocks and stones at a driverless car. Throw it at a motherfucker who's beating up a woman at McDonald's. Yeah! Okay? Okay? <laughs> you are uh, what? Yes, boy! You see how I yes, brought it around? Boy. You see a message. But that's the issue. People are getting more angry at a fucking driverless car exactly. than they will with right. someone Whoa. getting Bring it in, bring it in, baby. Bring it in, baby. Yeah, yeah, we're back over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we go. Yeah. Yeah. It's how it's right. down. You want to join in? I give a two one thousand what the fucks because the robots are going to be winning the war soon enough, and this is the beginning. This is the first battle. This is the Matrix. This is Terminator. This is man versus machine. And how do you know that car you throw a rock at doesn't turn into Bumblebee or some shit? Like I don't want. I, to, and we know like what this. Bumblebee. I know that they have like a different. They all. have like a, a young woman on the poster. I didn't see the movie, but I feel like we all felt like Bumblebee was a brother. Yeah, yeah he nobody, should have been a Cadillac nobody, Deville. Nobody saw the movie. Bumblebee should have been a Cadillac Deville. <laughs> they I, know Bumblebee <laughs> is a brother. Why is he a Mustang? He's a Cadillac Deville with white wall tires and yeah. spokes on it. Break Get it right like next that. time. <laughs>
Well, Amanda, Matt McGay playing. Amanda, <laughs> I'm so happy you came by the show today. Thanks for having thank me, guys. Thank you for bringing your energy, and, and thank you for all you do. You got your HBO special coming up, I Be Knowing, January 26th. Be Knowing. Uh, January 26th. Uh, that's the only uh, comedy special that we're looking forward to. Yeah, because, you know. Yeah, looking forward to that. Coming up <laughs> yeah. next, straight from our green room, Packers tight end and current free agent Mercedes Lewis is here. But first, the Raiders are one of five teams that can be forced to do HBO's Hard Knocks next year. Maybe they'd be better off doing an interactive episode of Black Mirror Bandersnatch. Take a look. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Uh, I got you some cereal here. You want uh, Sugar Puffs or Frosties? Thanks, boss. I'll tell you what, those Frosties look great. Sugar Puffs it is. I hate Sugar Puffs. So I was thinking about this whole Khalil Mack thing. I know he probably deserves the money, but I think we should trade him. What do you think? That is absolutely ludicrous. Khalil is the best defensive player in the NFL. What's going on? So it's settled. We're trading Khalil. Also wanted to pick your brain on Amari Cooper. I mean, do we really need him? Well, I mean, look, uh, in my opinion, Amari Cooper's the cornerstone of our offense. I don't think it'd be a good idea. That's what I was thinking. Even if it doesn't work out, we'll just blame Reggie. <laughs> One last thing, coach. I'm actually headed to see my barber tomorrow. What kind of haircut should I get? You know, I've always said change is never a bad thing, so you maybe try the boozy... What, what in the spider two Y bananas going on? I, I know someone's controlling me. Somebody out there? It's, give me a sign, okay? Just, just give me a sign. Mostly football. Who's controlling me? You're not making any sense. Just make sense. Yes, win, baby. <laughs> Making his first visit to mostly football as a former Pro Bowl tight end who spent 12 years in Jacksonville. And this past season, he was out playing with the Packers. Along with Martellus, he'd make up the most intimidating front court in all of sports media. And I hear he's an amazing <coughs> bowler. Sadie's <coughs> Lewis is on the show. Nice court, dude. What's good? Backcourt. No, you guys be up front. How you doing, man? How's that? I'm good. I'm good. You know, you... uh. You are uh, one of those tight ends who can do a little bit of everything, just like the guy next to me on the right. Um, talk to me just sort of about the state of the tight end position. You've been in the league for a long time. How's it evolved since when you got in the league? Yeah, when I when I first got in the league, it was like hand in the ground, you know, being able to do both. I mean, it, and it all depends on who you get drafted to. Like, I, was, I got drafted to Jacksonville, run heavy, play action pass, take our shots. But, you know, what it's turned into now, it's more like, you know, the tight ends are more like receivers. I mean, I wish that I got 80 targets in a season. You know what I mean? The most catches I've ever had in a season was like 58. And like, you know, you see. Well, well do you, I always felt like in my career, you better off showing early that you can't block. Right? Because once you can block, they, they start using you in that role because there's not a lot of guys that can do it. They're like, but you do it so well. I'm like, but yeah, coach, but it's third and six. Why am I blocking? I've been blocking the whole game and that motherfucker get to run around. Like, reward me. That's like saying picks all day and a motherfucker never pass the ball to you. That's why the big man shoot the three when he finally get it because it's like, by the time you give me the ball, you know what I'm saying? So, but I just think like the dynamic of the tight end position really is actually a little bit is being replaced by the running back. So the tight end, we should be, if you have a four down, a three down tight end, one that can block run, it opens up more plays for everybody on the field. But nowadays, you show your hand by which tight end you put in the game. Yeah, I mean, I, I was, uh, I don't know, like when I kept coming out of college, caught a lot of passes, Mackey Award winner, all of that stuff. Um, you know, one of the things they asked me when we were in our meetings um, during the draft was, you know, can you be a full time blocker? And I remember Mike Tice who's from, <laughs> from like New it. York, Jersey, yeah, yeah, bro, came up to me, grabbed me on my shoulder. He's like, you looking a little frail. I'm not sure. I'm like, bro, seriously? You must ain't really watched my tape. But I think he was just saying stuff just to get me riled up. But he ended up being one of my coaches in Jacksonville and then making me like his 
little toy soldier. And I'm now, I go in there as a pass catcher, but because, you know, the quarterback situation in Jacksonville, like we never had like a great quarterback. And so now we're running the ball all the time and that, that kind of went rounded my game. So uh, it worked out. Went from that quarterback to Aaron Rodgers, and like well, Marty shared a season in Green Bay, and you know, you part know, of a season, part of part a of season. a season. <laughs> I know you, some Packer fans are probably mad. He's sitting next to me right now. <laughs> well, you were there when when things kind of went south, and and Mike got fired, and and what happened? Was the locker room blow up, or what was the vibe? Uh, the locker room there is a little different than what I'm used to. I think, you know, being in Jacksonville, that locker room was more uh, more vocal. Uh, Guys, if they're bitter, they're going to show it. They're going to talk about it. And Green Bay is a little different, you know. And I think, you know, all of that stuff that happened towards the end in Green Bay all came from the top. I felt like, you know, Aaron had his own, you know, set of things that he wanted to do. And, then, you know, obviously McCarthy had his things that he wanted to do. But, you know, I just think it was a, it was a little dysfunction. Uh, and, you know, the one time I really saw it for the first time is we were in the huddle. And uh, Aaron was like, I guess McCarthy called in to play, and Aaron kind of was like, nah. He was like, who? He was like, Devontae, give me this. Sadie, come off the ball. You give me this. Gave a, a direction and a protection to the line and, and went, and it was four-minute offense. He threw a 40-yard bomb for a completion. I'm like, what's really going on? Like, I've never seen nothing like that before in my life. Yeah, i never – like, that. but the thing with that, that whole thing was like – as a tight end, I think McCarthy's office was one of the worst tight ends you could put um, offices you could be in as a tight end. No question. Like you, you're not getting the seam balls, you're not getting the deep sevens, you're not getting the deep over routes. They don't call that. They got so I think the, a lot of stuff that you build as a tight end to be productive. I think that's a real a lot of reason why they haven't had a productive tight end, like an overly productive tight right. end in years there because of the way that offenses run. But also Aaron likes to throw the ball. To the out to the outside of the field and not in the middle of the field. So it's like when you look at as a tight end, when you look at certain quarterbacks, there's some people who like to eat up the middle. But right. Aaron like to hit them outside comebacks, 19 yard, 25 yard comebacks. He just like to show off. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing the ball from one hash all the way to the sideline. Did he ever hit you with a no look pass? Did he? Did you drop it? Bro, nah. I, I like bobbled it and caught it. I dropped it. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck was that? Bro, he so. Like he'll do like like in a quick game, like if say if it's like uh, like drag slant, right? If you have like a flat route and a, and a slant they don't on the know same side. Hey, James is deer in headlights. I play Madden. I play Madden. <laughs> I know so what a drag route that. is. So Aaron, Aaron will drop back and he'll look. He's looking at the slant, but he'll throw the flat or vice versa. He'll look here and throw it to I'm the just, slant, I'm and it be on the money though. Like it don't be like, and he ha like his release is like very different, man. It's not your conventional like. Stand up tall, throw the ball over the top. He's literally, he can throw the ball anywhere from any point in the pocket like this. And he doesn't need the laces. Does not need the laces? Yeah. I'm like, bro, is your hands big or what? Like, <laughs> I, I never really asked him to see how big his hands were, but I'm like, bro. Who are you, Trump? The, the, way, the, way he's, <laughs> the way he's throwing that ball, I'm like, bro, that, that's, he's amazing, though. Well, let's talk about your old squad, the Jaguars. They went, you know, 5-11 and 11 after going to the AFC Championship game. And obviously, you know, the stuff with Leonard Fournette and what's going on with Blake, a quarterback. And I don't know, do you think they trade Leonard Fournette? I don't think so. I, I think that, first of all, I mean, when I was there, you know, we were always rebuilding every three years, you know, and if you... Every year. It, it was ridiculous. <laughs> Not every three years. You give like, a little bit too much credit there. <laughs> <laughs> but if you do that, then you're just same cycle over and over and over. Like, when do you, you know, <laughs> finally just be like, okay, you know, sometimes you got to have certain guys like this on your team. You know, and you just need dogs. Point. You got, you got like, to have. I them. just feel like, like I always say, you need motherfuckers that eat with their hands, no right? Question. Like you need some, like you need that guy that was drafted in the sixth round that drives a Ferrari. You know why? Because he goes show up to work every single day mm -hmm. and fucking play so he can afford to get no that question. Ferrari. Like the people who dress like the people they want to be, like that's how that guy is. He wants to be the star, so he's gonna bring it every single guy. You need a guy that has a couple kids to feed. <laughs> You do, because they fucking, right. like, those are ones I'm like, God damn, that motherfucker, he breaking every single special teams, everything. He do whatever right. he got to do. You got motherfuckers like me who got diversified portfolios and shit. The game starts to change for you after you diversify your portfolios. Like, well, God damn, that shit hurts, coach. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that one. Yeah. According to Go my across stocks. the middle or do some <laughs> animation. I don't know. I'm going right. to fuck with these cartoons. <laughs> well, you brought up fashion. Now, I know fashion is very important to you. I think Sports Illustrated names you one of the most fashionable athletes. 
50 Most Fashionable Athletes of 2018, and you have your own fashion show coming up. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. What's, what's your influence? Where's this, Django? On the... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he can't shoot, man. Let him introduce the product first. Nah, so, I mean, this is just a little... This is a lookbook, man. You are fly out there. These are just some, some wasting exam all those examples, examples of the drip. Wasting all those outfits in Green Bay. <laughs> Maybe might, might as well. So yeah, so what's going on with you? Have a fashion show? So it's not necessarily a fashion show. It's more. It's going to be more of a lifestyle type thing. I think. You know, at the beginning, it was you know fashion because me, my brand manager, my boy Jack McClinton, uh, who's a fashion influencer, and then Alan, who runs Upscale Hype. Um, which is a, another fashion platform, but we're all four real friends that uh, get it, have a, an opinion about, you know, just certain things, how to maneuver to the tight spots uh, in big cities. And we all come from different walks of life. And um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. I mean, we, we start trying to figure that out within the next two weeks, uh, un uninterrupted, picked it up and it's gonna be exciting. Question, are you done? I'm not. You wanna play another one? Yeah. Why? <laughs> I still love it. I still wake up. I love it. Um, my body still feels really good. And really, this was a year off for me. I mean, I was just saying earlier, I went from playing 70 plays a game to 15 plays a game because it's 11 personnel. We, we lived in oh, that so, world. Yeah. And uh, with the new, I just want to see how it is with a new coach. You want to go back to Green person. Bay? Yeah. 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 You yeah. want to get another year in Green Bay? Yeah. <laughs> More Green Bay in your life. Yeah. Yeah. Marty, how do you feel about that? I mean, shit, whatever the want to do, I ain't mad. <laughs> <laughs> appreciate yeah. you coming by, man. And, I appreciate and it. You got a quick Super Bowl prediction? Uh, my bold prediction, uh, Saints and Patriots, man. Uh, I just think that, you know, in the last four weeks, uh, the Patriots have been playing really well. And, you know, you know, if, you, if you're like a coach or a GM, you look at the season in, in quarters, right? So four games here, four games there, and you look to see who's doing well, you know, each, each quarter. And... Um, you know, obviously, you see what the Saints have been doing, but the Patriots is, you know, have been playing really well. So we'll That's the happens. Saints, really, really going out on a ledge there. <laughs> really, I really appreciate that. Um, no, thanks so much for coming by. It's always great to have a tight end on set who can actually block. All right, coming up next, mm -hmm. uh, we got uh, we got some comedy that our staff has done that is probably really, really funny. So let's watch it. <laughs> Love is everywhere. We just don't always recognize it as it takes many shapes and forms. Love is always present. However, we are not deep shit. To be more present in 2019, that's definitely a thing. All right, joining us once again to talk some playoffs and whose playoff dreams went down the toilet faster than one of those deep shits from Marty. It's our good friend Liz Loza, who's kind of like the Tom Brady here to my Drew Bledsoe. Oh, no, no, no. I was Brushed more like Teddy Bridgewater in Week no. 17. Thank you. Well, reports surfaced uh, this week that, the, the, bus that like the Giants that. might be open to trading Odell Beckham Jr. and that if available, the 49ers might be the first in line with an offer. The Giants shot down the rumors, of course, but, I mean, what else are they going to say? Should they even consider trading OBJ, you think, Liz? I, I mean, I think that um, Odell Buckham Jr. in a Kyle Shanahan offense could be pretty amazing, but I don't think that after you pass on Sam Darnold and you put your hopes on Saquon Barkley and now you have, like, these two amazing pieces, that you're going to mess with this sort of talent, especially after, right, after paying him. One thing I learned about the NFL is that everybody's on a trading block. Anyone can be traded if they get the right deal. They get the right offer, mm -hmm. out of there. They don't really care about that. They just want to be able to put – to get more for what they have. Like, they would trade anybody. You saw Khalil Mack got traded. But don't you think the New York media is a little bit different? I mean, you played for the Giants. There's a di You saw what happened with Eli last year when they, like, benched him and things. I, I just feel like that is a place that's a little bit more. No? Okay. Doesn't you know. matter. Like, right. To me, like, I don't know. Odell is like an NBA player playing in the NFL. Like, on his rock star whole kind of vibe. And I feel like those dudes in the NBA at least, dictate where they want to go. Jimmy Butler says he wants to get traded. Kyrie says he wants to get traded. Kawhi says he wants to get traded. And I don't think Odell wants to get traded, and he is the biggest thing in that city. I think he's the biggest star in that city in you, sports right now. Yeah. But you can't control You can't compare it to the NBA mainly because the NBA is built on the player, right? The player has power in the NBA. The player does not have power in the NFL unless you are a quarterback. They don't only when they can put no trade clauses in their, in their contracts, all those things. Like, you, you can't do that at any other position. He might be the closest thing to that in New York. We'll see. I don't know. Hmm. I think he stays. He's box office, man. 
as my man Stephen A says. <laughs> yeah. Box office. One of the more interesting storylines this Sunday is the brother versus brother matchup between Eagles pass rusher Chris Long and Bears offensive guard Kyle Long. When asked earlier this week about facing his big brother, Kyle replied on Sunday, we're not related. Now, Marty, your own brother Michael is also playing in this game and is a huge part of the Eagles. Excellent D-line, and, and not too long ago, you two played against one another. What's it like to play against your brother? What's it like for the whole family when you guys match up? I could see these two motherfuckers going at it, mm -hmm. Kyle and Chris, just because they're both two fucking psychos. It's within a good way. I love Chris. I love Kyle. But for me, Michael, nah, we don't do that shit. We always taught to whip other people's ass, not whip each other's ass. It was just like the uh, standard in the household. So if you fought Michael, you had to fight me. It was no such thing as a one-on-one -on -one fight. And like when we played against each other, it was... It was really like bro like they call it brothering, but it, yeah. you know, but we're bro uh, uh, you know, uh, or whatever. So brother-in-law or whatever they want to call it, and I call it brothering because of my brother. But even in a and then when we played against each other, they had to put us both like one on second team and one on first team each day because I would just be like, hey, the ball's going to the left. Let's just make this look good. We both <laughs> <were brothers. That's laughs> awesome. Like I don't want to be because like my like there's a like when we played, my brother wait to line lined up, waited to line up until I lined up. Right, so if I went to the left, he went to the right. So him and Cliff Aver would switch sides. He always did that when we played. There was one time where I was off the ball and I, I motioned, I went to this side, but he went to the other side and I was like, don't go. Like in my, I'm like, don't go to that side. Don't, Cause I was supposed to cut the defense in on the mm. other side. And so when I come across, we just kind of like hit each other like this. And everyone in the film room started laughing at me. He's like, what the fuck is this shit between you two <laughs> oh, right here? Because if I cut my brother, if I break his legs, that's his kids. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. my nieces and nephew. I'm taking food out their mouth. Well, my nieces, because he has three girls. So I always think about like my brother being hurt. I don't want to be the person to hurt my brother. What about your dad, though? I mean, you just had your dad on Revenge of the Jocks, your podcast. Yes. And Howie Long, the father Thank of. You for dropping it. And I watch it all the time, listen to it, know your social. I'm on it, Marty. But Howie Long, the dad of Kyle and Chris is uh, his birthday is this Sunday so he's gonna watch both of his kids on his 59th birthday you're saying that your dad taught you like you don't mess with family I don't know if it's someone's birth like that's crazy like what yeah. it's my birthday and like one of my I want my kids to bust each other one of them's gonna lose well shout out to Howie Long because he's just an awesome human being and he's like always tell Chris and Kyle like if they made like what John Smith was supposed to be and look like the white American that's exactly what Howie Long is Boots on, shirt tucked in, built like Superman up top, cartoon character legs on the bottom, and like nice ass cartoon skin. character. 19 legs. Skin. That's such a Howie Long birthday. It's my birthday, and my sons are oh, playing football. football like football Extra birthday. Yeah. Well, I, I think, <laughs> but I think this, I would say that family is, I've had the privilege of playing with both of the brothers, and they're excellent competitors and great people. So, Howie and his yeah. mom love Jet. They love Jet. Like, Kyle used to just, when Jet was just a baby, Kyle used to always, like, Jet loved to see Kyle, like, when Chris was with the Patriots. So, like, me and him still talk. And Chris, just, the only thing I tell Chris is, when we go out there, just remember the story of Job. <laughs> well, that. from I that. that <laughs> Ain't ready for that. It's a pregame thing we used to always do. Seven teams from last year's playoffs failed to make it back into 2018. The Vikings, the Falcons, the Panthers in the NFC, and then the Steelers, the Jags, the Titans, and the Bills in the AFC. We pretty much figured that the Bills were a long shot to return to the playoffs, but Jacksonville and Pittsburgh, I mean, Marty, which of those surprise you the most? Uh, definitely Pittsburgh. Jacksonville, like anyone can have a good year to be good every single year is to be excellent. Like anyone can luck up and have a good year and play very well and the way the football games go is very interesting. But Pittsburgh is a team that underachieved. You know, the, with the talent they have on both sides of the ball, quarterback putting up numbers like that, but still not getting enough wins to get to where they needed to go. So I would say the biggest upset in that was the, the Steelers. Did they, and Antonio. Did they tie the Browns this year? Who did they tie? Pittsburgh. I feel like when they tied, uh, it like no. took all the wind out of their sails. When, whoever, when, they, when they tied in week five or six, they, yeah. they, they tied Cleveland, and they were just like. I, I think it was Cleveland. Yeah, they were just like yeah. done after that. When you tie with Cleveland, it's just kind of like, are we really equal? Yeah. <laughs> Where do we go from here? <laughs> yeah. This was before the Browns were like playing well. That yeah. was for the first signs of the Browns. Yeah. Like, oh, shoot, they can hang. That's when okay. everybody's looking at themselves in the mirror in the locker room like, who are we? Yeah. You can tell, too, in that game that Hugh Jackson was like, I'm not used to winning. Like, something feels. Like, he started to jitter and stuff. Yeah, I don't look that deep in there, but that, that makes a different point. Like, winning is, that's one thing I always say about the Browns is, like, once they learn to win 
and how to win, they were going to be dangerous. You could feel it. But when you you could become a loser and just lose, like you just expect to lose, like no matter what. Like, hey, we can do whatever the fuck we want to do today, but at the end of the day, we're going to lose. So now they starting to feel it was like the win, and you get that taste, that, that winning in your palate, and it's just like, ooh, this is what it feels like to be a champion. I want more of this. Yeah. It's like sex for the first time. On Mostly Football, we like to look at the past and make predictions for the future, while stepping away from football from time to time to have a little fun. Let's do all three right now. Liz, this time next year, yeah. what do you hope everyone will be talking about as the biggest story of 2019? Can I, I don't know what I want everybody to be talking about, because there's a lot of things I'd like people to be talking about, like equality and peace mm. and like women running Congress. There's a lot of stuff. But what I don't want people to be talking about is those big ass family with the last name Kardashian. I am done with the <laughs> Kardashians. If there is a New Year's resolution, it is to to mute on the Kardashians. We talked about like, are they the standard of beauty? Some people say yes, some people say no. I don't know, I'm, I'm just done with them, with Kanye, all that. Yeah, I, I'll go so, last. Uh, I go last. All right, then you go, Ben, because I don't know yet. <laughs> I want people to, in the end of 2019, to be totally cool and comfortable and talking about the fact that we live in a universe that is also inhabited by aliens. We saw that Con Ed explosion in Queens the other day, and people thought it was extraterrestrials coming down and making jokes on Twitter, but like we all know aliens exist. So let's hopefully get to a place where they show up and they're like hanging out with us. Maybe we, they're part you of the football. Show up. It makes you think they aren't. Yeah, yeah. maybe they're already here. Maybe I just want them to be show up in our lives in a way that we're no longer like, do they? That would be so dope at the end of 2019. It's like, all right, aliens are here. They're part of our society. And let's now figure out what's like, how to work together. Thanks, Kyrie. Um, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't, Go I ahead don't, and follow that, James. I don't know. I think the biggest story will just be the monumental rise of uh, James Davis. I think I'm gonna be the next <laughs> Tiffany Haddish. You know, I think I'm just gonna have a monumental year and I think I'm gonna be out on everybody's mind. This is more of a law of attraction thing where you put it out there. Yeah, you know, I hope it happens you like the you. last black narwhal? I don't, what is or with something? people talking about stuff? I don't know this episode. <laughs> well, that just shows you. Orthopods, that, narwhals, you need a, I didn't read just, more. Yes, you need to educate yes. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany has a great book. Yeah. Marty, it's oh, your turn. Yeah, well, I want no one, for what I want is people not to worry about 2020. Is right? What year is it right We're now? We're in 2019. Yeah, I don't want people to worry about 2020, right? Okay. I want people to worry about the now. I want people to find their inner peace and their inner consciousness to live in the now and to be present. Therefore, they can be aware of what's really going on in the world, like aliens amongst us. So I want people <laughs> to really find themselves and become one within. Like, I think the ultimate journey is to find yourself or to become yourself, because you don't need to find yourself because it's already there. So mm -hmm. I hope everyone figures out who they are by the time 2020 comes around, because some of you motherfuckers just too old not to know. Liz, I'm so glad you know who you are, and I'm so glad that when you come on the show, Marty th says things like, what year are we in? So I appreciate you being <laughs> here, as always, and we'll get to your five gambling locks of the weekend. <laughs> time, for me, time is not a, really a thing. I don't believe in time the way that People believe in time as a linear, you know, I get it. clearly as our show is about 45 <laughs> minutes over right now. Yeah. So uh, I will get to your gambling <laughs> fix uh, I, I, I for the weekend. You didn't make any gambling nope, fix? All right. Somebody did. Maybe Adam did. All right, we'll get to those in a little bit. <laughs> All right, here on Mostly Football, we, of course, love the movers and shakers, and we like to give them their props. Even if you're not down with his pops, you got to love that LaMelo Ball is a senior in high school and has his own shoes. It's kind of killer. He showed us his latest big baller brands yesterday on his IG. He also showed us that he's got some bunnies, too. I love how he gets access to the Lakers court as a kid in high school. Time now for the Marty Awards. My Marty Award this week goes to Wales, the mammal, not the city. I had the chance to swim with the beautiful, majestic humpbacks off the coast of Kona in Hawaii, and these mythical creatures contain so much wisdom and so much power. They're beautiful souls, and I think whales should be more in the conversation along with pandas and dolphins as some of the most beloved animals on Earth. Shout out to whales everywhere. I love swimming with you guys. Mahalo. <laughs> okay, free Willy in this motherfucker. These name dropping animals this time. Did you ever think that a penguin could be a baby whale? Deep shit. Deep shit. <laughs> My Marty Award goes out to Moleskin. 
the notebook journal that I love to use to write down all my big ideas and everything else that I can think of. I'm not a big fan of writing on like tablets and stuff because I feel like it doesn't exist when it's on the computer. Like in paper, I could touch, I could feel it. And a lot of the great shit I make and I write and I create happens right here in this notebook. Thank you. Uh, For giving me a place to be. They're not a sponsor, but please send Marty his free. <laughs> my Marty Award goes to my man Usher. Yeah, taking bold risks with the hair game. That's right, we're straightening it up. Looking like the Harlem Renaissance. Looking like Malcolm X before he got his mind right. You know, just we're just we're doing we're bringing perms back. Yeah. I want everybody to really express themselves this year. Whatever haircut you want to rock, outfit you want to rock, do you, and don't let anybody tell you you look stupid. Not even me. Yes. But but, yeah. but real talk, they look stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and I, speaking of notebooks, if you want to take a look of what I actually write in my notebooks, this is a collection of uh, incomplete ideas, uh, thoughts, and other experiences that I have with sketches and notes. And I had a meeting with Phil Jackson. There's my notes from my meeting with Phil Jackson. There's a lot of my illustrations. And there's an original short story that has been created that no one's re read before. And there's only 500 of these made. You can get these at www.theimaginationagency.com. I appreciate How you. How much? These are 80 bucks. Oh, $80 oh, for yes. a book of uh, that's incomplete? Yeah. Can I get one? Yes, you can have this one. My first train to action! Yeah, thanks. Wait, man, I'm sorry, what the fuck? Wait, hold on. You got my uncle like that on a Cadillac. You got the fake money on here, man. What you wait, doing? Wait, I want one too. Hold on. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's, you know well, I just want to say this. For the whole family, huh? I just want to the whole family. I just want to yeah. say this: that when you do purchase these <laughs> items, like they allow me to be able to create better new stuff for you guys. So I appreciate all the love and the support for my creativity. So thank you. Books. I books. would like books I, are going to be real big in 2019. Give me a book in Baltic. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't Costco, bitch. <laughs> the Rams got the number two seed and earned a bye this weekend, but cornerback Akeem to leave. Well, you couldn't escape our hard-hitting questions here. At Mostly football. Time for four downs. Here, let me get to. Definitely a, a great feel. We confident in ourselves. We definitely think we're going uh, to compete with, with a lot of receiver, quarterback groups. As a defense, man, this thing could be special. I think our media night, Super Bowl 50, our media night, man, I just, you just seen a, a super happy Coach Phillips. That was probably our funnest night. And try talking one on one. Just keep it fun. You know, I, I, that's what I say. Don't. Get personal, cause then guys want to get personal with you, and then when they see you outside of football, they might fuck you up. Talk football, keep it fun. You ain't built like that, don't act like you built like that. I pick six, cause it's rare. Like, I got 10 of those, who knows how many times I had sex. It's harder to get, so I'm gonna go with what's harder to get. I'm gonna say LeBron. I was born in Cleveland. I grew up a LeBron fan, you know what I'm saying? So I go to whatever team LeBron go to. So I'm a Laker fan because of LeBron. So I'm saying LeBron. I'm really excited that our resident gambling guru, Adam Caporell, has taken some time away from hanging out with Kendall Jenner and Ben Simmons at the Clippers game to be with us on, on this gambling <laughs> yeah. segment. Yeah, hanging now. out with them. Oh, yeah, for sure, yeah. <laughs> well, happy, <laughs> happy 2019 to you. And you haven't lost any money this year, right? No, so far, so good. Day three. All right. So a lot of year left. All right, there's a reason there's a tarp and ladder over there, and this actually might make you smile. And then it's because things didn't really go my way. Last week, long story short, James and Adam, you made smart picks, and me, well, not so much. I was on vacation and ended up the big loser, I guess, on the week, losing $150 of fake money. My punishment's coming in a bit, but first let's jump to some odds, looking at the teams playing the wild card weekend ahead. First, let's get to it. If you were to put your money on any of the eight teams playing this weekend to win the Super Bowl, Adam, who, who looks good on the board to you? I mean, I think the Chargers have some good value at Basically, plus 1,800, which I think is really massive right now and way too high. But, yeah, Chargers, and I think the Eagles are actually going against your quasi-beloved Bears. Yeah, I guess I'm now a Bears fan this wild card weekend. I like that they're the favorite here. Marty, if, if you're looking at that board of any of the teams that might get a win wild card weekend, who do you like? I, the, I mean, it's, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> Wildcard teams often make a run to the Super Bowl. But I'm saying that's what the thing is. Like these, these games are the ones you can't really predict. You have 
it's the only time of the year we don't know what's going to happen in these games. Who's going to show up? Who's going to, you know, play well? What's going to happen? Elements is just, this is the most exciting football to watch. It's like watching the fourth quarter in the NBA. Yeah, it's definitely the most exciting football weekend. I like a lot of the road teams this weekend. James, what are you looking at? I like, I like uh, the Chargers, who I've been with the whole year. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> been behind them the whole year. Rep- Born and raised in L.A. <laughs> Born and raised yeah, in L.A. Been, your childhood. Yeah, totally. exactly. Uh, who's not going to make it, I have to say, is the Bears. You know, I, I'm Wait, sorry. I, I'm just, just, I'm just looking at you because the angle of how I'm sitting. But also, <laughs> <laughs> also, I mean, Adam and I, we discussed this, and and I, I'm not saying he'd agree with me, but I just feel like the last time the Bears really won anything was in the Revenant against Leonardo DiCaprio. Amen. But they didn't really win in that, so. Think so they didn't even win yeah, in that. Exactly. So. so, all right, let's get away from Bear Talk. And they won for a little bit, though. To the end. <laughs> for a long time, it was good. Yeah. So we'll, of course, do some NBA MVP odds. Why not? James Harden just finished one of the most epic 10-game stretches in league history, dropping 40 a night, nine assists, wearing silver outfits and just bawling out of his face. He's definitely now in the MVP conversation as Houston tries to right the ship. The Vegas odds have Harden trailing Giannis in the MVP race with the likes of LeBron, Kawhi, Curry not too far behind. Adam, who's your early pick for the NBA's MVP? I mean, the real legit MVP of the league is LeBron James. Exactly. But he's not going to win it because the NBA writers who vote on this every single year like to switch things up, but it really should be LeBron every single season. All right, so you got LeBron. (laughs) Marty, who do you think is the NBA MVP this year? I mean, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Why does that even not matter? He told me about it. the NBA's MVP I, I, award. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna go with. Fuck. See, the writers don't know shit. You know what I'm saying? They just be voting to be voting. You know. Oh, what really? Saying? <laughs> and, uh, depends how. It depends. I mean, Anthony Davis is a motherfucking monster. So it just depends on. I just gotta see with the team. These are. I'm thinking about the individual success. I gotta look at the team records. So the right, well, it is an individual well. award, but yes, James. So yeah. As Adam said, and today I'm gonna be doing a lot of agreeing with Adam. Uh, served you well last week. It served me so well. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, but yeah, LeBron should be the MVP no matter what. If you're going off actual most valuable player, the Lakers were trash last year. We're now and contention and playoff contention. And he just literally, it's like night and day when he's not playing. But they might give it to Giannis because he's the next poster boy. They're trying to like pump him up to be the next superstar. And he's like a freakishly amazing athlete. So you might see it go to Gian- Giannis, onto to Kupo. Close. But it's, yep, but, I think, uh, I think but it should that. go to LeBron. I think playing in Milwaukee is going to hurt him a little bit. It will. And then, but, yeah, Kawhi has good value at plus six. I don't know. I think I think Giannis though is the front runner, and, and that's the only reason they're on TV, to be honest. Um, all right, switching gears back to all things football. We got some great games this weekend. Adam, where should we uh, be putting the smart money as the playoffs start? All right, so we have five games we're picking this week, which is a ton for us because there's a ton of action going on. Have to start in the college game because we have the national championship game coming up on Monday, and there I'm taking Clemson plus five and a half over Bama. As for the pro game. I got one stat you guys need to know off the top to tell you why I pick the games the way I pick them, but you should know that quarterbacks who are starting their first playoff game are 13, 29, and 1 against the spread since 2002. So keeping that in mind, I'm liking the Colts plus 1.5 over Deshaun Watson and the Texans. Give me the Seahawks plus 1.5 over the Cowboys. Give me the Chargers plus 2.5 over Lamar Jackson and the Ravens. And finally, last but, not, last but not least, I should say, loving the Eagles plus 5.5 over Mitch Trubisky and the Bears. Load that game. That's way too many points to give the Eagles. So that's five games, five dogs, and James, five winners. Five winners. I like I'm it. rolling with Adam. And you also, Cal- I'm, I'm, I'm friends with a very, very big Cowboys fan. And I just, I know what happens in the playoffs with the Cowboys. Yeah. So. That's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, all right, we mentioned that my punishment was coming earlier. James, you won last week, so why don't you let the people at home watching this right now to uh, let them know about what's going on with this tarp and everything. Man, it feels so good to not <sighs> Silly as a motherfucker. Anyway, uh, Ben, in a past life, you were a host on Nickelodeon's reboot of Guts. So in a time-honored Nickelodeon tradition, (laughs) you are going to get your butt slimed. We have a bucket over there full of gross green stuff. Marty's going to do the honors because he's taller than us. And I can't wait because... Is my head off the screen like the Muppet, the mom on the Muppets? This is so dumb. (laughs) Oh, man. What is it? Ah! Ah! Uh, <laughs> uh, ew. Uh, slow pour. Ew. Slow pour. 
That looks, uh, it's like. That looks worse than Nickelodeon. Way worse. Yeah, I don't it's think they not made movie quality slime. I don't think they made this right. Oh. This slime is gritty. It's like grits. <laughs> yeah, it does look like green grits. It's green grits. Hey, thanks again. I can only hope next week you get slime. So we've heard who you're picking in the Eagles Bears game. Cold. Let's see where our president dummy picked. Our president dummy. Hey Ben, all I can say is better you than me. Stay over there. This is quality TV furniture. That's it for us. Thanks for watching. Be sure to catch Mostly Football every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 Pacific on Yahoo Sports and Complex. Playoffs officially begin this weekend. Yes, it's been And you know what? It's time for us to go home. For James and Ben and Adam, I'm Marty. Peace, love, and tranquility. And y'all go out there and ball out. All love, all hugs over here. Yes. No? Is that happening? No. No.